In Neville's 1963 lecture, Grace versus Law, Neville said, If you imagine something unlovely of another, he'll come to that. It will boomerang too, but it will come to pass, for you are entirely free to imagine anything in this world, for imagining creates reality. A man imagined, if he imagines it and persists in that imaginal act, it will come to pass, and that's the law. So be careful what you think of another, because mystics are teaching in the end there is no other. And that's why there is always the great possibility of boomerang, because our energies mix, we are all intertwined. What you think on the outside, mystics are teaching, is just a reflection of what is within your consciousness. As I say many times, just like when you go to bed at night and you dream, you dream of a world as real as what you call reality, and yet when you're dreaming, everything feels outside of you, out of your control, and yet it's all part of you. So practice safe imagining, and always imagine the loving thing. Sometimes when we're lost in the dream, and we don't remember planting the seeds of the harvest, so when certain things don't go our way, we take it personal, and we feel anger or fear, thus perpetuating certain cycles we don't want to continue. When you feel lost, ask yourself, ask the depths of your beingness. What is the most loving thing I can do? Show me the way, I am open. And whether it be that moment, or maybe some other time, when you're going about your day and you're relaxed, and you start to hear the inner voice that has always been trying to guide you. In Neville's 1967 lecture, Have You Found Him? Neville says, remember, everything is a state of consciousness. You want security? Then assume that you are secure, and things will happen and you will bear the fruit of the tree of security. Get out of that state, and its fruit will vanish. You may wonder what happened and think someone deceived you. The market went down, or your product is no longer wanted. But you can only eat the fruit of security when you know you are its tree. Any state occupied bears its fruit, and your world is forever bearing witness of the state you are in. So what Neville is saying is if you want to know the state you are in right now, open your eyes and take a look at everything around you, all that you're experiencing, all that you're feeling, it's reflecting the state that you dwell from. And when something on the seeming outside upsets you, angers you, gives you fear, it is because that is the state you're occupying. But you must learn what is the state you want to occupy instead. You must learn to feel. What would it feel like to have that state instead? And remember, these mystics are teaching you that all states already exist. And as you become more conscious and spiritually awake, you will intuitively know how to tap into every state, and you will learn what works best to bring any state alive. For you are your own greatest teacher. Look at everything around you. Pay attention to your daydreams. Pay attention to what you react to. Pay attention to what you give your attention to. What news? What gossip? How much do you give attention to things that you want to grow in your life? Many people get addicted to the roller coaster ride of life, and it becomes so much a part of them. They don't know any different life. They forget any other life. So that's why you have to become your researcher. In the lab of you, find the things that make you tick. Whether it's vision boards or mind movies, affirmations or scripts, imaginary conversations or intentional daydreams, or whether it's self-hypnosis or a guided meditation, imaginal session. Don't let anyone tell you it must be one way or another, for various people have had success with all these various different techniques. Maybe some more than others, but find what works for you. Be open to experiment and take note. Write it down or record it, don't forget. You are always on this path anyways, you are the path. And finally, in Neville Goddard's 1967 lecture, he dreams in me. Neville says, Tonight, take a mere wish and see it in your mind's eye as fulfilled. Contemplate it. Merge and lose yourself completely in it. Allow your wish to take on objectivity, all the various tones of reality, so that it seems now to be the only reality. Then break it, and return once more to merge in this section of your dream. Neville's talking about the dream of life, which you call reality. And reflect upon that which was so real only a moment before. Do that, and no other power on earth or in the universe can stop that which you have imagined from objectification. Simply rest in confidence that it all will be objectified and keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is simply that moment 
when you do not make any effort to make it so, because you know it is already so. Do not labor to add to it or take from it. It is going to happen just as you judged it as good and very good. You try it. And here Neville is teaching you how to bring vision to life, how to embody it just like you do when you daydream throughout the day or even when you go to bed and have a night dream and are fully in another world, oblivious to what you call reality, especially when you become lucid in such night dreams. But as I said, learn even from your unintentional daydreams. Learn from those moments you become so immersed, whether it's in a movie or whether it's looking up something that is your passion, your dream. But learn to be more aware and intentional in your life, so you're bringing to life the things that you want to manifest in this dream of life and becoming more conscious and aware to say no, to stop that, what you don't want to give life to, what you don't want to experience. Since you're listening to this, you are reaching a point or you have reached that point of maturity to use more discretion in what you allow yourself to give attention to, immerse yourself in. And as Neville has also taught, we are in the state of being human. And in this state, it can happen even to Neville. You hear the news, you hear the gossip, and before you know it, you react. And you might not always feel to revise every reaction. Well, that's okay, but at least take a moment every day, Neville often says, and to sleep, and look back at your whole day. And if there's something you didn't like, revise it, reimagine it, see it the way you wish it had been, your own intentional daydream, your own intentional movie running through your mind. And as you continue this, you will see the power in all that the mystics are teaching. But you must learn to find joy in it, the same way people find joys and passions in watching their favorite gossip or playing their favorite video games. Learn to fall in love and enjoy such a practical skill as becoming aware and intentionally imagining. Practice makes perfect. And hearing such lectures by mystics like Neville, they will keep you in the vibration, thus keep you going. So Neville is teaching you there's one maker, one creator. So whether you had an awful day, month, year, Neville says, if you are brutally honest with yourself, you will admit that what happened was related to your imaginal acts. But the problem is most people can't retrace their harvest. They don't even know what they thought today, last week, last month, last season, what they continue to think, feel, react to. And it may seem overwhelming at first. It can be as simple as just making a list of all that you do want in your life. And that can be easy, because when you get triggered and you start to realize all you don't want, turn those around to what you want instead. And even just reading this list, even once, twice, or thrice a day, especially those poignant times before going to bed upon a waking up, or when you're especially relaxed, maybe when you're a little sleepy, or you're relaxed walking through the woods, or looking at the sky or ocean. Whatever it is, we all have these moments in our life that give us some sense of peace and joy, and what fertile grounds to implant from. But I can also tell you, even if you are in the mist of hell and it seems unending, you can still walk on water, turn water to wine, and turn your back from the reality that you may feel a stabbing your soul and go within into imagination. And you can touch a place so real in imagination, it almost seems more real than what you call reality, and then know you've done the good work. And repeat this act as long as you are desirous, yearning, hurting, until that energy starts to grow and take over into momentum and start to dissolve the crystallized energy of the past, usually unintentional thoughts, reactions. So as Neville is often taught, persevere. You must. That's what will make the difference between you and the seeming others who still don't get quite what they want, who still don't revolutionize their life, master this skill. And perhaps as mystics teach, as you wake and you bring your heaven on earth, all of the seeming others, gracefully, efficiently, will reflect the same. Neville says, now walk with your head up high, knowing that you have learned from your mistakes, and from now on, try to imagine the best as you perceive the best to be, knowing that these acts must project themselves in this world. Then you will awaken and rejoin the brothers, for I am not a god afar off. In me, lo, we are one, forgiving all evil, and seeking no recognition, if we are one. Why should I demand recognition? Why not forgive all, for they know not what they do? And now knowing that all our deepest heart wishes are fulfilled already, and we just allow them, what does that feel like? Feel it. And with that feeling, let us surrender it and go into the silence.
good, my giant angels. Please check out one of the first sponsors of this channel, Tokyo Treats and its sister company, Sakuroko, a monthly Japanese snack subscription service that I personally enjoy myself. You can use the code NEVULUTION for $5 off your first order. The links will be in the description section beneath this video. Thank you.